This is an ongoing series about me trying to turn my field of weeds <laughs> into a fall food plot. Today we're going to be talking pH, uh, how to check your pH, different ways to do that, also how to correct it, uh, specifically conventional liming methods compared to liquid lime. I'll also be discussing what's been going on in the food plot there since uh, last week, uh, how the glyphosate's working, killing the weeds off, and uh, what's been going on since then. If uh, you haven't seen the last episode, I'll leave a link up here if you want to go back and check that out. It's mostly about uh, weed control and uh, a couple of things about backpack sprayers and also uh, just a brief history of uh, my food plot up to this time. Hey, do me a favor, uh, let me know whether you uh, are just thinking about starting a food plot or if you've got a food plot going, uh, let me know what you're planting. So I'm not going to go into a deep dive on pH other than to say that the reason we care about pH is because in order for a plant to survive, it has to have the proper pH in order to intake nutrients to thrive. The closer you are to the correct pH, the better the plant will do. For most of the stuff that food plotters are going to be planting, you want to be right around 7. And when you start dropping below 7, the plants just aren't going to survive as well. Just uh, put it on a scale, if you're down below 5, not much is going to grow at all. <laughs> And depending on what type of uh, plant you're putting in, uh, the closer to seven, the better off you're going to be. Uh, let's just take uh, cereal rye for an example. It'll grow between five and seven, but it'll grow a lot better the closer to seven you get. A quick way to just kind of get a feel for what your pH might be is just to see what's growing where you're going to be planting. My plot, back before I uh, cleared it, uh, had a lot of pines in it. <laughs> Ferns, had some blueberry bushes, <laughs> which uh, all require acidic soil to grow good. So uh, chances are my pH was bad. Uh, so if you just look through your plot or area that you're going to be planting in, and uh, look at what's growing, you can just Google it, uh, pH for pine trees, pH for blueberries, whatever is growing, and it'll give you an idea of, of what pH they grow good in. The right way to go about it would be to get a soil test done. Uh, a lot of seed companies provide that service. Uh, your local conservation department uh, would be able to do a soils test for you. Wherever you're going to have it done, we'll have instructions on just how to go about doing it, so I'm not going to get into all that. But uh, that is another option, and that's probably the most accurate way to get it done. I've tried a couple of different ways to test the pH down back here. Uh, I've tried those probe ones that you stick into the ground. <laughs> One of them there, uh, I tried it in several spots. It didn't seem to be working there. and. Uh, I pulled it out of the ground once and the wire <laughs> come out of one of the probes. I tried another probe one there, another inexpensive one, and the reading on it said I think around six or seven all the time. Uh, checked several different spots, followed by the directions, and just couldn't get it to work. The one that I seem to have the best luck with is the ones that it's a little kit and has a tube and you put a little bit of soil in it and a capsule that has, uh, I don't know, powdery stuff in it and then add a little bit of distilled water and uh, it's got a little chart that you look at that shows you what the pH level is. It's probably not the most accurate way to do it but uh, it seemed to, it'll give you an idea anyway of what your pH is like. The one I like the best has a chat right on the container and it's got a wider range of P 
pH that you can check for. It seems to work pretty well. It's just a pain to do it. Uh, you know, have a bottle of water with you and uh, try to dump that capsule and the soil in that little <laughs> vial. Uh, but it'll give you an idea of uh, where you're at and uh, what you need to try to correct it. So regardless of how you do it, once you get your soil test back or uh, do your own pH test down back, you'll need to uh, try to adjust the pH. If you do a soils test, they'll tell you exactly how much lime you need in order to correct your pH. Uh, if you do it yourself, uh, the general rule of thumb is for every degree you need, you need to put a ton of lime down. For an example, if you've got a five, you need to put two tons of lime down to get up to seven or a six, one ton. Uh, it's pretty basic. As far as conventional lime, you've pretty much got three options. Uh, pulverized lime, pelletized lime, or ag lime. Uh, and they all got their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the ag lime is hard to spread. Uh, and here in Maine, <laughs> at least where I am anyway, uh, I'm not going to get anybody to come here with a truck and spread it on my food plot. And they'd probably have a pretty hard time doing it anyway. The pelletized lime is a little bit easier to put on the food plot there. You can throw it in a, a spreader and just go along there. Whereas the pulverized lime is a mess, but it also works a little bit faster. The problem with conventional lime is it takes a while for it to work. <laughs> There's a lot of factors that go into how fast the lime works, what type of soil you have, what type of lime you used, how you applied the lime. Did you just uh, top dress it on top of the soil or did you till it in? So there's a lot of variables. From everything I've seen or read, uh, conventional liming methods usually take one to two years to get the full benefit. And it takes quite a while to make any significant adjustment to the pH at all. I've heard people say, you know, two or three months just to go from like a five to a 5.3 or a six to a 6.3. So it takes time. Michigan State University has a article that, uh, does a little bit deeper dive into uh, the different liming options, uh, why one works a little bit faster than the other, and uh, the pros and cons to it. I'll leave a link down in the description there if you want to go and check that out and do a little bit deeper dive into the topic. So I definitely think that uh, conventional lime has its place and we should be using it. <laughs> the long-term benefits uh, are good. Uh, but short term, it really, if I start planting next week <laughs> and put a ton of lime on there, it's not going to do me a whole lot of good this season. It might help a little bit, but not much. So that's where the liquid lime comes in. Read quite a bit here the last week about it and watched uh, several videos on it. And to me, the science behind it makes sense. It's definitely not a long-term solution. <laughs> but if you're in a position like I am where you want to plant next week, I can definitely see the benefits to it. And I'm not going to do a deep dive in how they can put a ton of lime into a one or two gallon jug, but uh, I'll leave a couple of links down below of uh, different companies that have uh, more in-depth detail on uh, just how they can put a ton into a gallon. <laughs> but uh, check out those other links there if you want more information on it and uh, you can go from there. So one more interesting note. <laughs> Pricing. Now I live here in Maine and I'm not in an agricultural area. The local tractor supply is selling their lime for about four fifty a bag. That figures out to about two hundred and fifty dollars a ton. Now, if I drive an hour one way, I can get it for about 
I think around 350. That's still 175 or so dollars a ton and I gotta drive for two hours <laughs> to get it. The liquid lime costs $45 for a jug, depending on which company you use, and they'll ship it to your door. <laughs> Uh, like I said, it's not a long-term solution, but uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how much it helps short-term. Anyway, for me, a short-term solution where I'm going to be planting next week to put that liquid lime on here and get immediate results makes a whole lot of sense. And, you know, to put regular lime on there and not have it really have any impact on the plants for the next two or three months. <laughs> That's after my growing season. <laughs> I still think that conventional lime has its place and we should be using it, but uh, uh, short term, I'm going to put some liquid lime on it and see how it works. Maybe this fall or in the spring, put some uh, regular lime down and uh, try to correct the problem totally. Just curious, have any of you uh, tried the liquid lime yet? Uh, and if you haven't tried it, uh, does it sound like something that uh, might be a viable solution to get the pH up? Uh, let me know down in the comments. As far as what's going on down back, if you watched last week's uh, episode, you'll uh, remember that I was talking about the deer not hanging around. This rain has uh, got the clover growing a little bit and uh, the deer moving around and uh, I've seen uh, doe and fawn, I've seen a small six-pointer stroll through the yard uh, and even a pretty nice eight-pointer. Uh, they didn't stay around very long there but uh, they're coming by anyway. Also uh, I see a couple of jakes come through the yard and they hung around one morning and uh, another day there was a couple of hens that hung around all morning. Uh, I didn't get video of that, but uh, there's some activity going on anyway. It's been about eh, two weeks since uh, I put the glyphosate down. It seems to be doing a pretty good job so far there. There's still some green spots, but uh, overall it's looking pretty good. I'm kind of surprised. Some of the clover is starting to yellow up a little bit, but it doesn't really look like it's affected it that much. So I don't know. Uh, it might kill it. It might not. The piece way down back uh, had been uh, sprayed with glyphosate, I don't know, a couple of weeks earlier. So uh, it's looking a lot better down there. And I took the wheeler and uh, a homemade drag I've got there and uh, kind of scuffed it up a little bit, uh, getting it ready to plant. Uh, it's starting to look pretty good there, but it's got a ways to go yet. I'll probably put one more uh, application of the glyphosate down when I do the rest of the plot there just before I seed. But overall it's uh, coming along. The rain. <laughs> Last week and this week have been ideal growing conditions and I hope you guys have seed in the ground and are benefiting from that. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I think I'm going to get bit in the end here. Uh, Probably when I get ready to start planting, uh, we'll be back in drought mode. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to be talking about what to plant in fall food plots, uh, what I'm going to use, and uh, maybe what some other options are. Uh, so make sure uh, you uh, subscribe and uh, catch the next episode. Thanks for watching.